Many thanks for joining us on the newsroom. I am Simisola Adugun. The River State Government has withdrawn its earlier approval of the Adokie Emie Simaka Stadium given to the People's Democratic Party's presidential campaign for its mega rally in Port Harcourt, scheduled for Saturday, February 11. A statement signed by the State Commissioner for Sports, Christopher Green, said the withdrawal followed credible intelligence to the government and recent development indicating that the presidential campaign organization was working in collaboration with the faction of the All Progressives Congress led by Tony Cole. Meanwhile, the spokesperson of the PDP Presidential Campaign Council in Rivers, Lelulu Nwibubase, who confirmed the development, insisted that they were not rattled by the development. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has confirmed an attack on its facility in the Idemili South Local Government Area of Anambra State. The hoodlums who attacked on Wednesday set ablaze the office of the electoral umpire. Speaking on the development, the INEC National Commissioner and Chairman Information Education, Festus Okoye, assured that the permanent voters' cards PVCs kept in the Commission's fireproof cabinet were not affected during the attack. The Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offences Commission, ICPC, has disclosed the arrest of one Oluwadara Sini Emma for selling the new Naranos on social media. ICPC spokesperson Azuka Ogugua said the arrest was as a result of intelligence received which led to the ICPC operatives to seek out and promptly arrest the suspect. Ogugua further explained that Oluwadarasimi is currently in the ICPC detention and is helping the commission with its findings on the criminal trading of the Naira. On the global scene, the United States White House has announced that it will let the national and public health emergencies related to the COVID pandemic expire on May 11. Both policies have been in place since March 2020. The move will end some of the federal rules that eased consumer costs, for example, the requirement that insurance companies cover eight at-home COVID tests a month. In business, oil prices rebounded on Thursday after tumbling in the previous session as a weaker dollar brought back some appetite for risk assets and the OPEC Plus decision to roll over an output cut helped ease oversupply concerns. Brent crude futures rose 65 cents at $83 a barrel, uh, while West Texas Intermediate U.S. crude futures advanced 71 cents to $77 a barrel. Both benchmarks plunged more than 3% overnight after U.S. government data showed big fields in crude and oil product inventory. Australia has announced moves to erase the British monarch from its banknotes, replacing the late Queen Elizabeth III's images on a, the second rather images on its $5 bill with a design honoring the indigenous culture the central bank announced on Thursday. The decision to leave her successor, King Charles III, off the $5 note means no monarch will remain on Australia's paper currency. Meanwhile, the Reserve Bank of Australia has said it will consult indigenous people on a new design that honours the culture and history of the first Australians. In sports, Super Eagle striker Paul Onuachu says he is eager to start the next chapter of his career at Southampton. Onuachu joined Southampton on deadline day from Genk for a fee set to be a little above £18 million. The 28-year-old striker signed a three-and-a-half-year contract at St. Mary's to become Southampton's fifth recruit of the January transfer window following Ghanaian forward Kamal Din Suleimana during the final hours of deadline day. Well, that's it on the newsroom at this time. Many thanks for watching.